Okay. Okay, good morning. Uh, so you are all part of the mentoring hour. Yeah. It's good, right? Yeah. Okay, so let's um, let's pray, and then we'll start, right? Let's pray. Let's ask the Lord to speak to us. Father God, we thank you. Thank you for this day, Lord. Thank you for that you are our God. Thank you that you know our needs even before we ask them, Lord. So we come before you right now. Lord, we pray that you would uh, take care of all our needs according to your riches and glory. Lord, everything, oh God. Uh, Lord, maybe strength in our bodies, um, peace in our minds, in our hearts. Lord, whatever it could be, God, Whatever things that are bothering us, things that are worrying us, Lord, we pray that you would do, Lord, exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we can even ask or think or imagine, Lord, according to the power of the Holy Spirit that is at work in us. And so, God, this morning as we come before you, we come expecting for the touch of the Holy Spirit. We come expecting, Lord, the outpouring, the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Yes, Lord, we thank you that it is our joy and privilege, Lord, to come into your presence. Lord, it's our joy and privilege, O oh God, because you have made a way for us, Lord, to come to your presence, Father God, to receive grace. Father, we thank you for the grace that you're pouring out upon us. We thank you, Lord. And I just pray for all weariness, all tiredness, everything to disappear. Father God, we pray for God's sharpness in the spirit, Lord, and... Uh, that we may hear as the Spirit of God is speaking. And uh, I pray that even as you speak to us, Lord, we'll be quick to listen, Lord, and receive all that you are putting in our hearts, God. We thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Just sharing the notes for the online students, and um, you all have your notes. So we'll continue with our our journey. Yes, we have been looking at uh, what book? The book of Acts, right? And we looked at a few verses. So we'll uh, continue and then look at the rest of the verses also, which talk about the Holy Spirit. So every time we look at the book of Acts, we need to understand that this applies to us, right? Uh, that is one thing that we need to understand. It applies applies to us because we are in those times. We are in the time of the the New Testament Church, right? So this applies to us, and uh, and the work of the Holy Spirit is very very valid even for today. The way He moved in those times is is valid for today as well. So so it's exciting to to study the Book of Acts. Exciting to see all that the Holy Spirit is doing. And uh, and it's for us to say, Lord, do it again in our lives, right? Okay, so we learn a lot of things about the people, about the Holy Spirit, uh, about the power of the Holy Spirit, about the various ways in which he ministered, and so on. Okay, so now let's uh, look at, I think we stopped at chap chapter 7, right? We uh, Chapter 7, 55, we saw, uh, let's look at uh, chapter 8, Acts chapter 8, and um, this is verses 10 to 20. Right. So Acts chapter 8 talks about how, um, uh, so this is what happens, right? After the death of Stephen, right? Stephen was martyred or killed for his faith, right? He was executed. And after that, there was a great persecution. People who were following Jesus were getting arrested, thrown into prison, right? And the person who did it was, who was it? Yeah, Saul became Paul, right? So he was the one who was actually going on a rampage, getting people, finding out uh, if they were following Jesus and putting them into prison, right? And and so a lot of people were actually running away from their homes, 
away from Jerusalem uh, for safety. Okay, so one of one such person was Philip. So Philip ran away from Jerusalem, and he goes to this area region of Samaria, and as he's going there, he shares the gospel. Okay, he preaches the gospel. He preaches about Jesus. Now that is something that we that is something that again uh, you know stands out because he's actually being uh, chased uh, for his faith. Right? People are persecuting, so he runs away. You know, probably fearing his safety, fearing his life. But he goes to this region, Samaria, and there he again talks about Jesus. The very reason for which he is being arrested, he is being persecuted. He goes and he does the same thing. He preaches about Jesus. Okay, so we learn something about you know the faith of those disciples, the commitment uh, of those disciples. Okay, now when we look at uh, Samaria, what happens is people come to know Jesus. People are getting saved. People come to know Jesus, and uh, it, it says that there was a, a lot of a uh, lo lot of supernatural things happened. Uh, people who were held in bondage, everything were delivered. Right, uh, the Bible talks about that. Okay, then there was also one man who was into witchcraft. Okay, his, his name is Simon. They call him Simon the Sorcerer. He was into witchcraft, and uh, so Simon was actually uh, he used to do a lot of witchcraft. He used to do uh, so. They used to talk. They they the people they used to say this man is a great power of God and so on. Right, this man is a power of God. verse ten talks about that. So. They listened to him. Okay, Simon was an influential man. He used to do a lot of black magic. He used to do a lot of witchcraft. So people respected him. They maybe they were feared of, uh, afraid of him. They listened to him. Okay. So that is what verse says. They heeded him. Verse eleven, chapter eight, verse eleven. Okay. Okay. Everybody, open your Bibles, please, or open your because the note has the reference. But you keep your Bibles open. Read it. Okay. Chapter eight. Verse 11, and they heeded him because he had astonished them with his sorceries for a long time. Okay, But when they believed Philip, as he preached the things concerning the kingdom of God and the name of Jesus Christ, both men and women were baptized. Then Simon himself also believed. And when he was baptized, he continued with Philip and was amazed seeing the miracles and signs that were done. Okay, so people believed, people were baptized, right? Now they are following Jesus. Simon himself, this sorcerer, he believed, he was baptized, and not only that, but he, he followed Philip, he went along with Philip, and he himself was amazed. Now here was a man. Who was used to seeing supernatural things, right? But it was supernatural things done by the done by the powers of darkness, right? So he was used to it. So he himself was amazed seeing the things that were done in the name of Jesus. Right? So he, he saw the power of the Holy Spirit. He saw the things that were done, and it and says here that he was amazed. Okay. Verse fourteen. Verse fourteen. What happens is. The apostles who are in Jerusalem, they hear this news. What news? That people in Samaria have become followers of Jesus. So what do they do? They send Peter and John to meet with these people. Huh? So Peter and John come, and this is what happens. Verse 14, now when the apostles who were at Jerusalem heard that Samaria had received the word of God, they sent Peter and John to them, who, when they had come down, prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Spirit. For as yet he had fallen upon none of them. They had only been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Then they laid hands on them, and they received the Holy Spirit. Okay. So here is also something that we learn. Okay. Now, what happens when we receive, when we receive or when we become born again? What happens? When we decide to follow Jesus, when we give our lives to Jesus, what happens to us? I think your bookmark is down. What happens to us? We are born again. We are cleansed. Past is taken away. Second Corinthians five. 
and the gifts of the holy spirit um sorry tell me again we get the gifts of the holy spirit we get the gifts of the holy spirit okay yeah, mm. yeah. so we see that there is the indwelling presence of the holy spirit yes or no right so the holy spirit indwells us and that is how he testifies to us that we are born again he testifies to us and then we call god as abba father right so he testifies he witnesses to us that we are children or sons and daughters of god he testifies nobody has to tell us the holy spirit testifies to us witnesses to our heart that something has changed i am now the child of god okay so that happens to us and that happens because of the indwelling presence of the holy spirit indwelling means he stays lives inside of us okay then whenever we let's say we do some things that are not pleasing to god when we try to go back to our old life something happens within us which was not happening then we feel convicted we feel that hey, i'm doing something that is not right okay so the holy spirit convicts us that we are actually doing something that is sinful something that is displeasing god okay we grieve the holy spirit so all this happens because of the indwelling presence of the holy spirit okay in fact we are born again it, the bible says by the spirit of god right that which is born of the spirit is spirit we saw right john chapter 3 jesus explaining to nicodemus that which is born of the flesh is flesh that is born of the spirit is spirit so born of the holy spirit which means that birth that born again is caused by the born again experience is caused by the holy spirit right so that happens now here the apostles go and when what do they do they pray for them that they might receive the holy spirit okay and the bible says that he had fallen upon he had not fallen upon them okay so there is a difference between we uh, between the indwelling presence of the holy spirit and the outpouring or the baptism of the holy spirit there is a difference okay so both are not the same okay so that is something that we see because these people are already followers of jesus they are already born again right and there is great joy they have experienced signs wonders miracles and that they are baptized etc but peter and john come and then they lay hands on them verse 17 and they received the holy spirit okay so which means that they had the same experience which the apostles had in in the sense that they were baptized in the holy spirit so there is a difference between the holy spirit upon us and the holy spirit within us okay in simple terms yeah Yeah. Why why did God design it that way? Holy Spirit is the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Hmm. Why is there a difference? I really don't know. But the fact is, you know, the, and things like why water baptism? Like why is that a declaration? You know, it's a simple act, but why does the Lord place so much value on it to say that go baptize them, right, in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit? Now, it, well, with water baptism, we can say, okay, it's a willing act. I'm declaring, you know, it involves my will. Everybody sees, everybody knows, uh, and it's a symbolic of the cross. but when it comes to the holy spirit upon us the baptism of the holy spirit well this is something that right from the time jesus even before he started the ministry right from the time john the baptist announced uh about the lord jesus introduced right from the time he's been talking about that he says he will baptize with the holy spirit and with fire right and the lord jesus said you wait in jerusalem uh till you are uh, receive the promise of the father and then in acts chapter 2 acts chapter 1 is saying wait in jerusalem till you are endued of uh, promise of the father till you are clothed with power on high so which means that the, the lord after we become followers after we receive him 
the lord wants every disciple to go through this experience to fill with his spirit to fill with his power and what uh, i think someone says like the the gifts of the spirit being released and so on right so um, so all that the expression of the gospel with power witnessing of the gospel with power god wants us to receive this and walk in it so it's his will yeah okay so another, uh, anyone can speak uh, can anyone speak uh, Pastor, can I can I ask a question? Yeah, just one one one, one just one minute. Again, I'm just looking at this question in the chat, which someone has okay, uh, Joseph has put. Can anyone speak in tongues without the baptism of the Holy Spirit? Right. So no, you know, the baptism of the Holy Spirit is for the purpose of releasing of tongues. Oh. Yeah, yeah, sister, go ahead, please. You have a question. Uh, Pastor, like um, I have re received baptism and now. Uh, hmm. Uh, I was born again in 2006. Okay. But um, I don't remember that I've received the baptism of the Holy Spirit of fire. I'm sorry. Uh, just tell me again, please. You don't remember? Uh, that I have received the baptism of the Holy Spirit of fire. I mean, the. Mm, so. Um... How do I know that I have it? Because. Uh, Okay, so when John the Baptist talks about the baptism of the Holy Spirit, uh, how Jesus will baptize you, he says he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. And he's referring, fire referring to the refining, cleansing work of the Holy Spirit. right? And if you look back at your own life, I'm sure that there's been a journey of consecration, journey of you know, uh, putting away or a journey of refining, which the Holy Spirit yes. has brought about right, in your own life. So that is what is referred to as, you know, that the Lord will baptize, Jesus will baptize with the Holy Spirit and with fire. That is the refining, cleansing, um, purifying work of the Holy Spirit. Right? And I'm okay. sure you've experienced that. We may not have... I have a gift of tongue, not so much, little, but um, like I uh, don't, I have a gift of healing. Mm. Uh, when I pray, I know that uh, I get healed. Many whom I pray, people are getting mm. healed, you know, in the name of Jesus. Yeah. But, um, like, I didn't feel that experience, Pastor. That's what I'm saying. Like, right. when uh, people received and felt the experience at the same time, you know. Yeah. Maybe it is gradually, I'm not sure. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, sure. So, so the thing is, uh, we're going to we're going to learn about that when we study about the baptism of the Holy Spirit, and we're going to take some time to learn about each of the gifts of the Holy Spirit okay. know, in, the, in the coming days. We're going to that's part of the syllabus, um, yeah. part of the curriculum. So, we're going to learn about that, um, and also we're going to learn when we learn about the gifts of the Spirit. We are going to learn some some interesting truths about the fact that these gifts are for everybody. Right, um, and how the Holy Spirit is the one who holds these gifts. He's the one who has these gifts, and He indwells us, and He wants to release these gifts uh, through us. So we're going to learn about that as well. And how? Thank you. Sir. Yeah. Thank yeah. you so much. Right. No problem. Okay. So, so we see that uh, you know, the believers receive the outpouring or uh, the baptism of the Holy Spirit when the apostles come and pray for them. Okay. Now, verse eighteen. Okay, let's look at verse 18. We are in chapter 8, verse 18. Okay, so Simon saw, who's this Simon? Simon is the magician, right? He's a sorcerer. Now he saw that through the laying on of the apostle's hand, the Holy Spirit was given. He offered them money saying, give me this power also that anyone on whom I lay hands may receive the Holy Spirit. Okay, so he asked, he saw, he saw that something supernatural happened. Okay, now we don't know. He's saying this Holy Spirit was given through the laying on of the hands of the apostles. So he's saying, I'll give you some money. Please give me this power also. Okay, so that if, on whom I lay hands on, they will receive the Holy Spirit. So his motivation was, you know, I, I want to do something for the people so that they will recognize me. Right? I want to lay hands so that they can receive the Holy Spirit and so on. Right? There was some because earlier people used to look up to him. They said, hey, "This man is a great power of God." Right? Now 
all that was gone. They knew that there's a higher power, there's a greater power, and that's the power of the Lord Jesus, power of the Holy Spirit. So now, in a way, Simon wants to regain his influence among the people. Right? So he's saying, I want to lay hands. And so, um, so Peter rebukes him. Right? Peter says, your money perish with you because you thought that the gift of God could be purchased with money. Okay? So, so what, several things that we learn here. This baptism of the Holy Spirit is a gift of God. Okay? And uh, yes, it was through the laying on of hands of the apostles. That is one valid way in which God baptizes. That is something that we learn, understand. What else do we understand? That something supernatural happened when these apostles laid hands. Now, it, the Bible is not very clear. This passage doesn't say what happened. But it was something that Simon noticed. Okay, So Simon noticed that something supernatural happened when these hands were laid on. And so he says, I want this also. Okay, So see, if he did not notice, if he did not see, if he did not, you know, probably it was the gift of tongues. Maybe they started speaking in tongues just like earlier, right? We don't know. It's not mentioned. But something that Simon saw, Simon heard, so much so, it was it was something unmistakable that he said, I'm going to give you some money. I want this also. Right? Okay. So that is something that we see. Then Peter rebukes him. Okay, let's move on to um, verse 29. Okay. Verse 29. Um, I'm just seeing whether we need to read any other verse before that. Okay. Um, verse 26. Let's read verse 26. Now an angel of the Lord spoke to Philip, saying, Arise, and go towards the south along the road which goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. Um, so here comes a message that Philip, who actually came to Samaria, who preached the gospel, and a lot of things happened there. So the angel of the Lord comes to him and gives him a message saying, you need to go to another place. Don't stay in Samaria. Go to another place called Gaza and uh, go there. So he obeyed. He goes. Okay? And what we see is... Um, Verse 20, uh, let's read verse 27 onwards. So he arose and went, and behold, a man of Ethiopia, a eunuch of the Ethiopians, who had charge of all her treasury, had come to Jerusalem to worship, okay? and was returning, and sitting in his chariot, he was reading the Isaiah the prophet. So he's reading the scroll. right? Then the spirit said to Philip, Go near and overtake this chariot. So Philip ran to him and heard him reading the prophet Isaiah and said, Do you understand what you are reading? And he said, How can I unless someone guides me? And he asked Philip to come up and sit with him. And then what happens is Philip, beginning at what this person was reading, Isaiah, Isaiah 53, he begins to explain or talk, share the gospel about Jesus. So this person, he receives Jesus as Lord and Savior. There's some water there, and he is baptized in that water. So Philip gives him water baptism right there. Okay. So all this started when Philip was obedient to that, that message from that angel saying, go from Samaria and go to this place called Gaza. Okay. For this one man, for this person from Ethiopia, the angel of the Lord actually sends him there. Okay, so then it says that the Spirit said to Philip, go and overtake this chariot. Okay, so the Spirit, the Holy Spirit spoke to Philip. Right, so again, we studied about the Holy Spirit, how he is a person, like right? not just a force, not just power, he's a person. So, which means a person can speak and we can understand, right? So, we need to understand. We need to, you know, make that shift in our thinking that, yes, the Holy Spirit speaks. And yes, as a person, as a believer, I can understand. Okay? We should not always keep saying, you know, I don't know what God is saying. I don't know what God is saying. No, say, you know, I am 
someone who's born again and I have the Holy Spirit in me right and when he speaks he has designed me in such a way that I can hear the voice okay so what did the Lord Jesus say I am the sheep good shepherd and you are the sheep and the sh my sheep hear my voice my sheep hear my voice they know me and they follow me John chapter 10 right my sheep hear my voice so which means that we as a sheep we are able or designed created to hear the voice of the shepherd we can okay so we need to you know grow in our understanding and how he speaks and how i can understand it right so here the spirit said to philip go over overtake this chariot so philip goes he um, he the, the ethiopian notices him and then they have this conversation and from then on this man becomes uh, save right he becomes a Christian okay so uh, something else also we see verse 39 when we go down to verse 39 see Philip has actually baptized him okay verse 38 let's see let, verse 38 so he commanded the chariot to stand still and both Philip and the eunuch went down into the water and he baptized him verse 39 now when they came up out of the water the Spirit of the Lord caught Philip away so that the eunuch saw him no more and he went on his way rejoicing. Okay, so what do we see here? When he comes out of the water, the eunuch is, you know, he's baptizing and then he comes out of the water and what does he see? He doesn't see Philip, right? He opens his eyes, he sees Philip is not there. And the Bible says that the Spirit of the Lord took Philip away. Okay. Now, did we see that in the Old Testament? Something like this. About Elijah, about... Right? We saw that this man, uh, I, I, forget, I, I forget his name, he, he, is it Obed? Um, anyway, he has this conversation. Right? He says, uh, so Elijah says, you know, go and tell Go and tell the king that you saw the prophet, that I want to see him. So he says, oh prophet, you know, I'll go and tell this. You know what kind of a man he is. But then the spirit of the Lord will take you from here to some place where I do not know. Then I will be in trouble because I would have told him the prophet is here. And he will, you know, this man, because you are not here, I will get killed and so on. So he's very fearful, right? So what we see is that they had this understanding that this that, that God would do these supernatural works, right? The Spirit of the Lord will do these supernatural works, and according to His wish, according to His um, you know plan. So here is something we see that exact thing. He comes out of the water. Philip is not there. So where is Philip now? Let's read the next verse, verse forty. But Philip was found at Azotus. And passing through, he preached in all the cities till he came to Caesarea. Okay, so from Gaza, from that desert, to that city called Azotus, he he was, you know, he, he was supernaturally transported. Right? That is something that we see. Supernaturally. Right? In an instant, it says that he was found preaching in the city of Azotus. He, he found him in the city of Azotus and he went about preaching in all the cities till he came to Caesarea. Okay? So that is something that we learn again about the Holy Spirit. That the Holy Spirit speaks, that the Holy Spirit understands what the you know, real need of the person is. And if we obey the voice of the Spirit, then there is effectiveness. There is fruitfulness. See, what would have happened if Philip said, okay, no, I'm going to stay in Samaria. You know, I'm doing ministry. Revival is happening. Uh, let me just stay here. Of course, God would have used someone else, but Philip would not have seen the Ethiopian eunuch come to saving knowledge of Christ. Right? You had a question. Yeah, yeah. That it is the will of God to. Yeah, supernaturally transported him. Yeah. To do this, yeah, yeah, obviously, 
yes so it is um, the will of god to move this you know in fact um, i got, if, if you if you get an opportunity to hear a testimony about uh, brother yun in china brother yun um, like he was actually uh, in the underground church in the persecuted church he's written a book uh, there's a book called the heavenly man okay, brother yun y u n and there he actually testifies about his experiences in ministry and so on so uh, a couple of things that stand out is one is this where he says that he has to go climb like two mountains and then go to that village and uh, it's nightfall uh, sun is setting and it's a dangerous you know animals and so on but he starts running towards one hill and he finds himself in front of or in that village so he writes about that uh, as uh, you know supernatural transportation he, he writes about that and also he also writes about another thing about the prison doors being open how he finds himself out of a prison when the communist regime puts him in prison uh, just like how peter has that experience right where the angel opens the door prison door he comes out so these couple of things he writes about and uh, yeah so we know that it's a you know it's not something that we see very frequently but yes uh, if god so desires right we see this things happening right um okay so how do we know that we are baptized in the holy spirit are there any signs of proof to know okay um so how do we know that we are baptized in the holy spirit okay uh, we, we will be studying again we will be studying uh very detailed manner right about the uh, the baptism of the holy spirit um but uh to give a very short answer yes uh there's the tangible proof is that the holy spirit fills a person with power there is change within uh the holy spirit also releases the gifts within so that that is also another you know uh, thing that we see um well sometimes it is um, i would say uh you know we don't we don't have the words for it sometimes we experienced the baptism of the holy spirit and uh, we don't have the words to explain it maybe and so we think that okay uh, you know maybe i was not baptized you know but we've already been baptized right in the holy spirit so we will know we experience the presence of god we experience the power of god uh, so these are i would say two things you know, we experience the presence and power and um the gifts of god being released in us these are some of the yeah, some of the way some of the factors or, or some of the signs that we can say yes i've been baptized yeah okay um um let's see let's see right okay fine so does it help any other question uh follow up okay okay so let's look at acts chapter 9 okay acts chapter 9 this is about saul okay uh, very interesting acts chapter 9 and verse 17 okay uh, acts chapter 9 and verse 10 we see god speaking to ananias okay so ananias so what happens is saul is on the way to damascus uh, he has an encounter with jesus he falls off horse or whatever animal he was riding he falls off and he has his encounter he is unable to see okay so god jesus tells him you go and wait and there's another man who will come and you will be told what to do okay that's the instruction so jesus so paul goes uh, and he's not able to see for 3 days he's just waiting right verse 10 says now there was a certain disciple at damascus named ananias and to him the lord said in a vision so the lord gives instruction to ananias to go to saul and to um and to pray for him okay so verse 17 is when ananias goes there right he is obeying obeying that instruction and ananias went his way and entered the house and laying his hands on him he said brother saul the lord jesus who appeared to you on the road as you came has sent me that you may receive your sight 
and be filled with the Holy Spirit. Okay. So now, when we um, when we consider Saul, now something happened to Saul when we had when he had that encounter. Okay. Uh, right when he fell off, he asked the question, uh, "Who are you, Lord?" Okay. He falls off. He, he he's, I don't know whether he's got up. You know. Then he fell to the ground. He's on the ground, I think. And he heard a voice, Saul, why are you persecuting me? And he said, who are you? Lord. Okay, there itself, one change has happened. Right? And then the Lord introduced himself. He said, I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. Arise and go into the city, and you will be told what you must do. So now Saul, who's been persecuting the church, he obeys Jesus. Okay? So he's become, we can say he's become a believer, he obeys that instruction and he goes there. Okay. He's waiting three days. Uh, he doesn't eat, he doesn't drink. It says that he's been really literally, literally fasting and he's waiting there. Okay. Then Ananias comes and this is what he says. He says, the Lord Jesus who appeared to you on the road as you came has sent me that you may receive your sight. So he's unable to see that you may receive your sight, eyesight, and be filled with the Holy Spirit. Okay, look at the verse after that. It says, immediately there fell from his eyes something like scales, and he received his sight at once, and he arose and was baptized. Okay, so Ananias goes with that one simple thing that he needs to do. Go pray for him, and that lay hands on him and pray. And two things happen. He's able to see, and he's also received the bible says he was baptized he receives the baptism of the holy spirit okay um, so that we see happening there then something happens immediately verse 19 immediately he preached that christ in the synagogues that he is the son of god so this man who was going to damascus in order to attack the christians put the christians in prison he has this encounter he's filled with the holy spirit it says in verse 20, immediately he preached that Jesus say, you know what, I was wrong. Jesus is Lord. You need to, all of us, you know, we need to follow him. He starts pre preaching Jesus, right? Um, then everybody was amazed. They were saying that, hey, how can this be? Okay, then uh, another verse is that, um, that uh, verse 31, right? Uh, chapter 9 and uh, verse 31 says the churches throughout all judea galilee and samaria had peace they were edified and walking in the fear of the lord and in the comfort of the holy spirit they were multiplied okay so now here's paul he's filled with the holy spirit and here the persecution you know that has stopped that he was actually carrying out against the church and it says here that they walked in the comfort of the Holy Spirit. They walked in the fear of the Lord and the comfort of the Holy Spirit and the church grew. Okay, it says they multiplied church grew. Okay. So we see all this happening and it's something that happens around the life of Paul. Okay, The work of the Holy Spirit. Okay, Let's look at Acts chapter 10. Now Acts chapter 10 is about Peter. Okay, What the Holy Spirit does in and through Peter, okay, that is what we see in Acts chapter 10. So Acts chapter 10, what happens is Peter is in uh, the house of uh, this tanner and he's visiting there. Then he has, a, he sees a vision. He's, he's in a trance. He sees a vision and God speaks to him and asks him to go to this house. Okay, so what he says is, um, arise therefore, go down with them, doubting nothing for I have sent them. Okay, uh, let, let's read Acts chapter 10 verse 19. Acts chapter 10, verse 19, okay, it says, While Peter thought about the vision, the Spirit said to him, okay, again, we see the Holy Spirit speaks. Holy Spirit is giving explanation about the vision that he had. Okay, can anyone say, what is the vision that he had, Peter? What vision did he have? Mm. Mm. 
Right. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So the timing is perfect, right? He is very hungry. Peter is hungry. He is waiting for lunch to be prepared. Okay. So uh, and he wanted to eat. So they were making it ready. When he has a trance, then he sees the vision. Okay. So trance meaning he's you know he's there, but he loses sense of what is happening physically, and he sees this vision. It's a big sheet comes out, comes down from heaven, okay, like a big cloth sheet. And in that sheet, all kinds of animals are there. And as a Jewish person, he's not supposed to eat some of those animals. Okay, they had very strict dietary laws. Right? This is something that you can eat, you can't eat. No prawns, no crab, right? Uh, you can't eat all those. No pork. So, but th this sheet comes. And here, here's the voice, Peter, arise, kill and eat, right? So three times it comes and he says, no, no, it's not good for me to eat that. I can't, you know, I, I'm a Jewish person, I, I know. And the response is, what God has cleansed, you must not call unclean or common. What God has cleansed. So something like that happened. He has his encounter. This was done three times. And Peter's wondering, what does this mean? So he has this encounter, he has this vision, he's wondering, what does this mean? I'm hearing this voice, I'm seeing this thing. Then the Spirit spoke to him. Okay, The Holy Spirit spoke to him. It says in verse 19, the Spirit said to him, Behold, three men are seeking you. Arise, therefore, go down, go with them, doubting nothing, for I have sent them. Okay, So he does that. He goes with them. And they go to the house of Cornelius, who's a Roman, is he a centurion? Yeah, a Roman centurion. Okay. So they go to the house of Cornelius. Now, in Cornelius' house, everybody's waiting. They're waiting to hear what Peter has to say about God. That's what they're waiting. So Peter begins to, Peter's, Peter goes there, he begins to uh, preach, right? He begins to preach the gospel. And this is what we see, verse 9, um, uh, Verse 44, right? Go down to verse 44. So Peter is just giving this message, you know, he's sharing about Jesus. He's sharing how God anointed Jesus, who went about doing good, he was crucified, and so on, right? So, verse 44 while Peter was still speaking these words, the Holy Spirit fell upon all those who heard the word. Okay, so which means that people are hearing. People are listening to what Peter is saying. They are already expectant. Right? They are all you know, very sincere. They want to know. They want to know about what, who God is, uh, etc. So they are just waiting there. And Peter goes there, tells them about Jesus, shares about Jesus, which means that they, something happened to them in their heart. Right? And it says here, while Peter was still speaking these words, he was still you know, preaching the message, the Holy Spirit fell upon all those who heard the word. And those of the circumcision, meaning those Jews who believed in Jesus, who were with him, they were surprised. They were astonished, he says. Why? Because they heard these people pray in tongues. Okay. So these were non-Jewish people, Gentiles. Okay. So till then, the gospel was only preached to Jewish people. They could have been from different nations, but the gospel was preached to only Jews, people who were actually you know, following Yahweh, right? So now, Peter sees this, hey, these Gentiles, these non-Jewish people, they are also received the gift of the Holy Spirit. God has poured out the Holy Spirit upon them, and each one of them, they are all speaking in tongues. So verse 46, for they heard them speak with tongues and magnify God. They heard them speak with tongues and magnify God. Then Peter answered, and he said, Can anyone forbid water that these should not be baptized who have received the Holy Spirit just as we have? Okay, just as we have. They have received the Holy Spirit just as we have. So Peter sees this and he says, You know, hey, I think, why don't we just get them baptized in water? Okay. Now, it's not like, so, so that 
you know that uh, if you have a wrong understanding you know first i should be baptized in water only then i will be filled with the holy spirit this changes all that that order is not true you know sometimes people might say you must believe you must be baptized and then you will be filled with the holy spirit not necessary right here people believed in jesus they are filled with the holy spirit and then they are baptized in water the order is changed right so that is something that we see so peter says something very important here he says they heard these gentiles these gentiles they have received the gift of the holy spirit just as we have okay. so which means accepted to all the apostles all the disciples they received the baptism of the holy spirit right and here acts chapter 10 peter is making this observation hey they have also received the gift of the holy spirit in the same manner how we received okay and um, so he stayed there for a few days and so on so now we know that you know jewish people had very strict laws they would not you know um, uh, they would isolate themselves, distance themselves from someone who is not a Jew. They would not stay in their house. They would not eat a meal with them. Now, all that was broken, all those things, right? So here, Peter actually stayed with them. He fellowshiped with them and so on. So uh, he goes back, and then people are very, very upset, right? Um, the apostles who are there, they are, uh, they are upset, and they're saying, how can you go? How can you? We heard that you stayed with, uh, you know, this this is non-Jewish person and you, how can you do that? So in Acts chapter 11, Peter is explaining. Now that is also recorded for us. So Peter is explaining in Acts chapter 11 and verse 12, the spirit told me to go, to doubt nothing. So six people were there, we entered the house. Verse 15, he says, you know, as I began to speak, the Holy Spirit fell upon them as upon us. He fell upon them as upon us at the beginning. Verse 16, then I remembered the word of the Lord, how he said, John indeed baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit. So, Peter, everything is coming together now. Yeah, yeah. Now, this is what the Lord said, and this is what happened, even as I was uh, speaking, as I was ministering to them, right? Okay, we'll take a break here, and then we'll come back.